Hello, and welcome to episode seven of Muggle Yarns Podcast. I'm Becca, aka RBF42 on uh, Instagram and Ravelry. And I am Kate, also known as Miss Anthropenets on Ravelry and Instagram as well. And as usual, you can find us everywhere as, as Muggle Yarns on Instagram, Twitter, Ravelry. No, we're not on Ravelry, is that? But our group name is uh, Facebook, everywhere. Look for us. Yep, we're there. On our website, MuggleYarns.com, which has links to all of those things. That's correct. So, uh, long time to <sighs> see. Hi. <laughs> yes, uh, we went for a very long break in between. We enjoyed our holiday breaks. <laughs> We tried. We really did try to uh, yeah. meet up and record. It just wasn't working. Get 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 time with it. So. <laughs> we're back. It's the new year. 2015. It is. We're in the future. I know. And uh, of course, we're finally back online. And I'm having major technical issues. Hence the headphones. We actually have to call each other this time because my phone's not or my computer's not working. So, so we found a workaround, yeah. going a little old school that's in our technology. <laughs> yeah, as long as it works on Kate's end, that's all that matters. Yep, because <laughs> I am recording it. That's right. I can't hear her except for through my phone. <laughs> it's good. So, but hey, new year okay. that means new contest. That's right. What's our new contest, Kate? Um, so we are going to stick with the whole um, format of using a prompt. Have you guys respond to the prompt? So it's this Harry Potter one um, that's flashing up on your screen now. Kind of a fun one um, that we saw on Facebook. <laughs> well, several months ago, actually. We've been sitting on this one for a while. Um, and that I'm going to put up a skein of yarn for my stash that is um, a Game of Thrones colorway. It's Lorna's, Lorna Lace's... Uh, soulmate and the colorway is winter's coming and it's freezing outside so i felt like that would be <laughs> thing to do. uh it's not freezing here but i'm in miami so. yeah um, it's freezing inside because our ac is on <laughs> your ac is really on cold in january miami yeah <laughs> no it's definitely below freezing where i am right now but, um, and where are you right now? I am in Long Island at the moment. Um, I am right next door to the uh, Islanders Stadium, which makes my ha husband really happy because he's a big hockey fan and he likes the Islanders. So. Um, okay. But yeah, I'm in Long Island. Um, it's cold here. Yeah. It's cold in D.C. when I left. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this contest, will run it just like we did our last one. So on Facebook and Instagram, you can respond um, using the hashtag from the original post. So as soon as we get that posted, um, you'll see those hashtags. And then you can um, reply in the thread on Ravelry, which um, has been created but not updated. So that'll all be logistically figured out uh, in the next day or so. Um, and what do you think? Run it through the end of February? Since we're um, yeah, I think so. Late, late in January, we didn't get quite started at the beginning. Yeah, that gives about six weeks yeah. to get in all of your answers and, you know, answer it on Facebook, on Instagram with our hashtag, or on a Ravelry group, or Twitter. I'm sure we'll oh, check yeah. it. Oh, and, and I actually. tried the, the Twitter last time, too, so nobody responded, but I checked it. Um, and then, or on our website as well. So you can reply in the comments of any of the um, videos on the any website. Any of our posts. Yeah, and we'll catch that. Um, you can ins you can enter on as many of those different social media outlets as you want. You get one entry for each one, so you can double dip. But this time, I only have one skein of yarn, so you can't all be winners. Yeah, only one. But we'll pick from all of those different platforms. We'll plug it into Excel, because we know Kate loves Excel. <laughs> I'm an Excel nerd. I totally Yay. just started going on autopilot and messed this up. 
So I got the tea uh -oh. now. <laughs> Oh, maybe, not. maybe I didn't mess it up. Am I on a knit room? What am I doing? Who am I? What's going on? I didn't mess it up. I'm fine. Yay. So let's start talking about our knitting since I just, you know. Go for it. Got a little distracted. Uh, so so in the last several weeks, what have you uh, finished? I've finished a lot. Um, not I everything, that. but a lot. <laughs> Um, so I was working, last time we spoke, I was working on the Dustland mitts for my, um, it was the last item for my commission. So I finished those um, in the... They turned out amazing. They're really pretty. The um, it's, I used the oh. stroll, or the nitpick stroll tweed. So the tweed kind of took away from the um, texture, I think. It was hard to get a photograph where you could actually see all the texture. But um, she really liked them, so um, that worked out. And then I started, after I finished that commission, I started actually working on some Christmas presents. Uh, granted, this was already after Christmas, so <laughs> I'm a little behind. Um, but I finished the Bright Light socks, which were really cool. The pattern I used was um, PETA uh, socks, and it was for the Hunger Games cowl, um, which I'm going to link to to the designer because I can't remember her name right now off the top of my head and I didn't write it down. Um, but since the yarn was so flashy and, and sparkly and had neon colors, I ended up calling them PETA's Days in the Capital socks. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, he's all, he gets hijacked and he's all like brainwashed and stuff. So, like, oh, that's kind of a cool crossover. Yeah. Um, Everything is orange. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All the feels. Um, so anyway, uh, th those are on their way to their recipient, along with my dad's uh, gifts as well. So my dad got a pair of flip mitts and a beanie, like, stocking cap thing, which I wanted to make. I made him socks last year, um, but he has gigantic man feet, so I decided he doesn't get socks anymore. But he hunts a lot. He hunts duck. So he's out in the cold, in the blind, all day long. I thought flip mitts would be good because he can still, you know, shoot, but keep his right. hands warm. And then hats are always good. Okay. Um, so I did that in um, Nerd Girl Yarns Heart You, one of the uh, Doctor Who club colorways. Um, it's the Martha colorway, the woman who walked the earth, and it was uh, red and blue which are KU colors, and he's a huge KU fan, so that's why I picked that one for him. But it was a pretty um, colorway. It's kind of co-opted for a different purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the last thing that I finished in the last forever since we talked. Um, I just saw the picture of this that you posted, right? Yeah, that's this one? The, yeah, the woven scarf that I made for my mom. It's... um. It's so the first scarf that I've ever woven on um, using lace weight yarn. Uh, it took forever to warp. But then I decided instead of just doing a plain weave, I was going to mix it up a little bit, and I put some lace in it. And, oh, my God, it was so pretty. I love that technique. So cool. Um, and it was really easy to do, too. Like, I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated than it was. But I really like how it turned out. And I literally cut cool. that off the loom this morning before I flew to Long Island. <laughs> I saw it. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's sparkly, too. <laughs> Sparkles. Sparkles. So. Sparkles. Yeah. Woo. I'm exhausted just talking about it. I, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> mine, my, um, Finished objects are not nearly as much. I've just been busy doing, you know, not anything when I come home from work because I actually had to work over the holidays. I had Christmas Day off and New Year's Day off. But other than that, I had to work. Um, so I finished 13 and a half, no, 12 and a half of my Kickstarter <laughs> items. 
Hmm, what's that last half? <laughs> so, since we last recorded, I finished the Fangalist Mitts for Diane using um, Knit Picks Bravo Worsted. They were like a pomegranate burgundy color, and they were so soft. I have so much of that yarn left. Like, I need to do something else with it. Um, then I finished Carrie's hat, and she requested pink and white. So I went stash diving, and I found, like, a sport weight. It was for, it, um, like, a bulky yarn. So I found a sport weight white. And then I found two fingering weight. So maybe it was for worsted or a ran. Two fingering weight pink and white and gray oh. that I used. So it actually, I love the way that it came out. And so that's exciting. Yeah. And then I finished one of your mitts. <laughs> like, right hand it's a hoe. It's a hoe. It is. It's a hoe. <laughs> zombies call their half objects hoes. I like it. Yep. <laughs> the dog is sneezing. Because, of course... Um, sneezy over here. I'm also having a fit. Yes, but I bet it's if you can't tell. I bet it's because it's not because you eat hair like she does. No, she's not very bright. No, I tend not to eat hair. <laughs> <laughs> my my parents moved uh, me off that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That, that's really good. <laughs> um. Wow, you've got a huge list of imagining. Um, but anyway. But before we can get to that. I'm um, finished. <laughs> what we're working on right now. So um, after I finished my mom's scarf, which was the last Christmas present that I wrapped up there. Um, see what I did there? <laughs> um, <laughs> then I cast oh, off oh. for my sister-in-law's um, cowl. So I had planned on using... Um, the skein of yarn that I won actually from Sunrise Fiber Co. Um, it was vintage DK, which I rarely ever use, although it's squishy and fantastic. I just always buy fingering weight yarn. So um, anyway, so I got I won this skein of yarn, and it's in the colorway Holly Festival, like the um, Indian festival where they throw dye. You wear white, and they throw dye at you. You know what I'm talking about. That's so cool. No, I don't. Yeah, it's really it's really neat. Um, so the colorway is very color. It's very bright and vibrant, and it looks like she just threw dye on it, which is really neat. Um, so that seemed fitting for my sister-in-law. So I am knitting the honey cowl with that yarn, which is super easy. I like the honey. I just started it. Did I start it last night or did I start it today? I can't remember. But I worked on it on the plane and I'm already about halfway done. So um, that's the nice thing about knitting in non-fingering white yarns. Things go a little bit faster. That's correct. <laughs> um, and then I haven't made any progress on my sister's free bees socks um, at all. They're kind of sitting at home making me sad. Um, but I put them on my works in progress list anyway because I need to get them done because they are still Christmas presents. That's literally the only thing that I started before Christmas as a present and I still haven't finished it. Um, yeah, that's me. Mine is your other glove. <laughs> All of my hands can be warm. <laughs> Yay! So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I'm trying to find something in my Instagram right now. I can't find my messages because my friend sent me something for stash enhancement, but I can't find it. Really? I don't know where the finally messages. I finally got stash, <laughs> but um, yeah, my my works in progress is really your your gloves, um. I have something in Imagine Knitting that I just got the yarn for today, but I guess that goes right into Imagine Knitting. We'll go ahead and talk about the, it. The uh, scarf that you priced out for me, uh -huh. I she finally, 
they they accepted it and um we picked up the yarn colors and then i went and i actually got two of them two skeins of the blue today it's from um i have no idea what it's from but it's it's called the link hyrule scarf so link is from a video game from zelda yeah, Legend of Zelda. Zelda. It's from yeah. Legend of Zelda. Zelda is the girl, so Link is the character that you play as you go through the game. Gotcha. So it's a, Zel- it's a Legend of Zelda scarf. <laughs> it's like six feet long. And then you have to not double knit, but like well, embroider, uh, basically. Yeah. The... Um, the crest onto one end. They, she only wanted it on one end. So it's like sport weight mm-hmm. in the round, mm-hmm. which is going to suck. But I guess when you duplicate stitch, you don't want it to show and also you don't want it to roll. Yeah. Um, so it really will save you a lot of time in the long run um, with the right. rolling. But it's, um, it's on size three with sport and I actually bought a ran because I was at Joanne's Fabrics and I got Bernat Satin in like royal blue mm-hmm. so, so you can use that's the next category yeah but that's the problem is like it's only supposed to be a certain width Just so now I have to redo the, the, the whole thing yeah you got this. well the problem is when I have to duplicate stitch they gave us a chart so I have to like rework the whole thing mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but also because I only bought the blue and it actually has a stripe of red on either side, I have to learn how to do a provisional stitch <laughs> cast on thing. A provisional cast on is cool though. It's a good thing to know. Yeah. It's but I, I've never done one before. It, I mean, you can do it a couple different ways. I like the crochet hook way, it's really easy. You just you crochet your stitches onto your needle. And then when you're ready to do your, like, red stripe, you're going to take your uh-huh. crochet thing out, and it gives you live stitches. It's really cool. I have faith in you. It's neat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Like, I'm looking at the pattern, and it didn't even dawn on me that, oh, yeah, you need the red also. Yeah. <laughs> But I bought two skeins of blue. It calls for four, plus a red and a yellow. But it's right down the street. So. Yeah, well, and it, it's probably going to change, too, because you're using a different weight. Well, I actually looked, and somebody used the um, the other sport weight one. Satin? Satin sport? Whatever? Um, I'm not familiar with that yarn. Caron. Caron satin. And it's also an Aran weight, mm-hmm. Aran, whatever. So I figure it's about the same. Okay. So I need to contact them and find out what and they did. What they did chart wise, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably go up to size four, but that'll still make it that, like, much bigger. That's really going to hurt your hands. It's supposed to be a size three. Yeah, but with sport weight, if you try to knit yarn that heavy with needles that small, it's really going to hurt your hands. Yeah, well, I have to you like a six at the very smallest. I actually have to gauge. I hate <laughs> gauging. No! <God>. Damn it! <laughs> I hate gauge. <sighs> oh, man. But whatever. It's gonna be a cool project, um, though. Yeah, it's it's like half the length of um a doctor who scarf so and she wants it by like march i'm like okay if i can figure that out yeah like his birthday is it's a gift yeah that's cool though it's it's not for cosplay it's not for anything it's just it's a gift and he mentioned that he really wanted one so like wow you're a really nice friend yeah geez (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um so yeah that's my imagining 
Um, like play. you said, my list is really long. I'm imagining. I actually just made a list of all of the yarn that I brought with me on my trip and the projects that it goes But you're only there for a week. Well, I'm only here for a week, but they last time I was out, they sent me to back-to-back installs, and I never went home. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. If that should happen again, I have to be prepared. <laughs> I will go in soon <laughs> if I run out of knitting. And I really How much notice did... Mm-hmm. How much notice did you have about this trip? Um, I left today, Saturday. I found out about it on Tuesday. And I found out about it on Tuesday, but I didn't get actual confirmation until Thursday, which is when I made my travel plans. Yeah, so they don't give you a lot of notice. I, yeah, guess not. It's okay. It's exciting. Okay. Adventurous. So anyway, so the yarn that I brought with me, um, I have two more Christmas presents after I finish this cowl. Um, my father-in-law is getting socks. Um, I talked about these, I think, on the last one, but just as a refresher, he's a um, literally a rocket scientist. He's a smart dude. He likes math and science, and so I'm making him DNA dinosaur socks. <laughs> 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 With my um, Nerd Girl Yarns um, Swagger yarn in, um, it's the Jurassic Park colorway. And I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it's Jurassic Park yarn, DNA, dinosaur socks. Seemed to fit. And then my mother-in-law wanted a cowl um, with black and another color. So I um, grabbed a couple of skeins of yarn for that. And then after that, I'm done with Christmas knitting. Yeah. Yeah. So then and, I get to. And then fun knitting can start. Then I, then I get to <laughs> knit things that I want for me <laughs> or for other people still, but I guess that I want to knit. So one of my friends on this project, um, she, I worked with her in L.A., and she's back here on this um, Long Island project with me. Um, and she mentioned that she wanted a hat, so I brought some worsted weight yarn for a hat for her, which I can knock out in a couple of days. Um, so I'll probably work on that before I finish my Christmas knitting, but anyway. Um, and then I discovered my super picky husband, who doesn't like hand-knitted socks, does like hats. So okay. I, he picked out a skein of yarn, and I'm going to make him a hat. And... Um, if there's some extra yarn at the end of that hat, I may make myself a pair of socks. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is um, in the Nerd Girl Yarns group, they're having a color work a y- along right now. So I picked out two skeins of Swanky, which is a uh, merino silk blend yarn um, that I'm going to make into a um, Scottish Nightmare by Josh breaks so that is cool. like super super excited for this shawl it's gonna be so awesome and i really want to cast it on right now and i can't <laughs> so, no this is what happens when you get to the end of christmas and you're like oh everyone else is done with their christmas knitting why am i not so i'm a super slacker that's why yeah i didn't do any christmas knitting um, that was one of my New Year's resolutions this year is that I'm going to actually save money, um, put some aside every month for Christmas gifts so that I don't have to knit for anyone next year. <laughs> and then I will be able That's to cool. do um, the knit sweatmo and knit my sweater in November um, because I won't be knitting for anyone else. I can just knit my sweater. So there. Yeah. Um, so stash yeah. enhancement. Stash enhancement. Go ahead. Oh, well, I've already hand. talked about, I've already talked about the one for the scarf, which was just the burnet satin yeah, aran. But that's not really stash but, enhancement because it's not going in your stash. It's for a commission. But I got another one. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> There was this hashtag um, going around, I think it might still be, on Instagram, and it was called Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted or something like that. And I posted, and you're supposed to just post, like, 
one knit crochet yarny thing that you want. And will you talk about Mad Tosh all the time? I love so it's like, it. I want to try Mad Tosh. I don't care what. I just, I want to try it. And so one of my friends who I've known, like, forever, but I've never met. Yeah. <laughs> I met her on Open Diary 8,000 years ago. Um, she's like, oh, do you know that I'm from where, you know, it's, she's like, oh, you know, it's local for me, right? She lives in Dallas. I was like, no. <laughs> so she started, like, messaging me pictures. She's like, which one do you want? This one or this one? Oh, my gosh. So it's hashtag get your yarn wishes granted. And you repost it with the tag. You list one thing that you want. And if somebody has what you have, has what you want, they send it to you. And, you know, it just kind of keeps going. So I got um, it's really, really pretty. It's like a greenish brownish. Um, I think it's a worsted weight. I already put it away, so I can't look at it. Oh, wait. It's Madtosh 801010, and the colorway is Tannehill. Yeah, it's, oh, it's actually fingering weight. Picture flashing on the screen now. What is that, um, a, an MCN 801010? Um, yes. Nice. So it's Madeline. a Madtosh MCN. Well, it's it's beautiful and it's soft oh. and I just like I just like rubbed it against my face and oh, I just wanted to. Oh, Steve says hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Steve. Say hi to all our viewers. <laughs> I saw you looking hi, off screen. I was like, "Yep, that's that's the husband." No, <laughs> oh, he's standing there and he's like. <laughs> He's such a sweetheart. <laughs> That's awesome. That's totally not getting cut out. Uh -huh, no. Steve. <laughs> um. Anyway, but it's it's Divine. so pretty, and it's it's called Tannehill, and it's just gorgeous. That's awesome delicious like I, I don't know what I want to make with it I don't want to make socks because I don't want to walk on it <laughs> no you don't want to you I know people who will make um socks with cashmere blend yarn but I don't I couldn't do it I just would be so sad I always make sh uh, shawls I, out of mine but yeah that's me <laughs> yeah I mean I don't I don't really wear them you know yeah I'm like what am I going to use it for it's right. awesome and that I won't mind and a lace or a fingering weight scarf scares the hell out of me. <laughs> it would be like really, really long. I mean it's yeah. four hundred four hundred and five yards, so so pretty though. Well Thanks you, Georgia. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. If you do decide to do like a scarf or a cowl or something, um, knit it with bigger needles than what the label says, and it'll be drapey and soft and beautiful and amazing. Well, I made um, I made a cowl. I don't know a lot of years ago, out of fingering weight. <laughs> Back then. It was a test uh, many years ago. It was a test, and I didn't know any better. And I think I did it on like eight, like size eight, and I love it. That's awesome. And it's it's kind of like perfect and drapey, and so that's a possibility. Awesome. Yeah, that would be an, a lovely thing to have draped around your neck. Yes. Yeah. Mm, like size eight or nine needles. Perfect for Florida. Right. <laughs> Make it nice and, and airy and it won't be too warm or anything. Exactly. Very cool. So uh, what is this I see about yours? I One of my gifts this year <laughs> was a gift card. A big $100 gift card to Nerd Girl Yarns from my stepmom, which was awesome. 
So, um, it was so exciting. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I went and spent it like you do. And the last, um, Doctor Who Club colorway was this green color. It's still in the spoiler zone, so I'm not going to say what it was called or anything. Um, and I probably won't post a picture because I know there are people who watch it. Um, but I have gotten this round of the club on fiber and I've never spun yarn for a sweater before. And so I really mm -hmm. like this green color. Green is, is one of my favorite colors. So I was like, okay, I'll <laughs> can hear Phoenix. Um, you can hear Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought enough yarn or enough fiber to spin uh, yarn to make a sweater. And then I had a little bit left over, so I got a couple of single skeins of um, of her Kansas City colorway collection. She's from Kansas City. I grew up in Kansas City, so um, I got the Plaza Lights colorway, which is really pretty, and um, the Sporting Kansas City, the soccer team, the, the colorway inspired by them is called Goal. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> I got a stain of uh, Western Auto Building, which is this really cool, like, I don't, I don't even know what era it's from, but this cool old sign that I drive by every time I'm driving into the Kansas City. So it's like this building, the Western Auto Building has a big sign. So anyway, I was like, oh, look, it's, it's nostalgic in my hometown. So I got some one-off skeins of that Aww. as well. That's yeah. cool. She also has a colorway called Kansas City Barbecue, but I am going to make a sweater out of that, so <laughs> I didn't get any one-off skates. Yeah. All for you. Yeah, my, um, totally not yarn related, but my boss gave me this huge gift certificate to Macy's. I'm like, I don't know what to buy. <laughs> <laughs> like, can like, I trade it in for like excited to get this but I would rather have <laughs> more yarn like can I trade it in and buy some yarn with it <laughs> oh that's sweet though I bought a lot of new Your clothes son. over Christmas I needed them yeah I've bought nothing you didn't go to Macy's? No, I'm saving it. Because either she's buying me a new coach bag or a new watch. It's big. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah, but I don't really need a new one. So. Like, I love my purse, and it was like a $40 purse, which will eventually turn into a diaper bag. It's Aww. big. So... Big purses are the but best. anyway, I have like four of them. Oh, my other boss gave me a little uh, coach wristlet for Hanukkah. Excellent. My bosses know me so well; they give me like awesome stuff. Coach and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> 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 Okay. So, wow, we uh, we haven't talked in a long time. My what you're watching list is really long. <laughs> I see that. So we did watch the uh, Doctor Who Christmas special. It was weird. I don't know how I feel about the episode. It, yeah, bizarre. Um, I the whole dreams within dreams within dreams was like. It was like Inception. They were kind of belaboring it though. Like it wasn't that well done. And I watched I, it twice and I still don't get it. Like I, I get it, thing, but I don't gross. like it. And um so Claire's not leaving now? No, she confirmed that she's coming back. Okay. She um, never said she was leaving, but she confirmed that she's coming back. Okay. I don't know. And then like the whole, um, when the doctor goes back and she's old. Yeah. I don't know. It was weird. And there was all these, like, articles, like, oh, a big Doctor Who star comes back for the Christmas special. I'm like, really? He wasn't a big star. 
He just died the episode before. Yeah, like, he was just on. Not a big star. Um, I do really, I, I liked um, Nick Frost as Santa. And I was I was really glad that he was on a Doctor Who since um, Simon Pegg was on back in Satellite 5. Was like, I do you know that um, that um, the guy who plays Strax uh-huh. was one of the elves? Dan Starkey, I think. Oh, really? That's he was actually funny. one of the elves. <laughs> That's funny. They were funny. They were funny. The, they were um, funny. I don't know, but the the actual the, the baddies were creepy at the beginning when they have like the thing on the face. But then, what they ended up actually being was just gross. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I conceptually, I get the episode. And I get what happened, and it took me twice watching it, and, like, all my friends were so confused, like, what was going on? Like, when you know how it's going to end, and you rewatch it, it makes more sense. Yeah, I guess. But it's... It wasn't a very Christmassy episode, either, like, oh, Santa's in it, but not really. Exactly. Throwing Santa into the episode does not make it a Christmas episode. Yeah, like I really, I really liked the um, Christmas Carol one that they did with uh, Matt Smith. I thought that was a great Christmas episode. Uh, this, the first this, Snowman one? No, the um, the one where with the song and the fish. The oh yeah, yeah. Well, they had all of them playing. Oh yeah, like, no, I don't get BBC America though. So well, I just, leading up to it, they had yeah. all of the Christmas specials playing. That's so. Cool. Yeah, it was really neat. So every time I would turn it on, I would be like, oh, that's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> but then we went out for Christmas, and we almost, like, we missed the first, like, ten minutes of the Christmas special, uh-huh. which ended up being fine because I was confused anyway. Right. But, um. Well, I think the first yeah. ten minutes might have made it make more sense. Not really, because I saw it again a couple, like, the next day. Well, I well we walked in when she saw Santa for the first time on the roof. Oh, that was really so maybe it wasn't. Yeah, maybe it wasn't even ten minutes. But like, I don't know. I'm not a fan. I mean, I keep I keep watching it. I'll probably never flat out give up on it. But I've been kind of meh. For a while now. Well, yeah, us too. He wants to write some episodes for Doctor Who. <laughs> that will be better. <laughs> oh man! But um, Patrick and I have our little our um, traditional Christmas viewing. So one of those movies is uh, Joyeux Noël, Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas. Um, it's a movie about the Christmas Eve. Um, kind of truce that happened in World War One. Patrick would kill me if I got that wrong. Um, between a uh, between the Germans um, and then a French group and a uh, Scottish group and they um, have a ceasefire and they do mass and they sing Christmas carols and play soccer and uh, then the uh, generals find out about it and end up taking all of those troops off the the front lines and they kind of they disband their whatever battalions or I don't know army speak they disband them um so they don't actually end up ever fighting fighting each other again after they have this truce after yeah so anyway that's one of our traditional movies it's amazing it's such a good movie um and then we always watch from the earth to the moon which is the mini series that Tom Hanks did about the um, journey from the Earth to the Moon. Um, so it's 12 episodes long. It's really long, um, and we got through eight episodes by the first week, and then we watched the last four after that. <laughs> we did get all the way through it eventually. And then the last time we talked, you had watched Love Actually, which is another one of your lists. That's my own personal list. I don't. I don't subject my husband to that movie. He doesn't. He's not a huge fan. He says that it's much better than the other ones that came after, um, like the New Year's Eve one, and there's a Valentine's Day one or whatever with American. Yeah, actors. I agree. 
Yeah. I agree with him, too, but I don't make him watch that every year. <laughs> That's just for me. Um, and, and then, then I was home over the break. I um, was actually home for, I thought I was going home for two weeks. I ended up being home for three. Um, so I was working on programming, like entering in menus and employees and stuff into databases so that they'd be ready for the sites or whatever. Um, so I would watch TV while I would type because I'm literally doing data entry, like I can multitask. Um, and then the, the database thing that we use is really slow. And like mm -hmm. you have to refresh and wait like several minutes for it to refresh. So I would knit while it's refreshing and watch TV. And I did this for three <laughs> weeks. It was awesome. So I watched a lot of TV while I was I home. see that. Um, I started watching Sons of Anarchy. I actually, I kind of want to watch that. It's really intense. Um, I think I watched like the first four seasons really quick and I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I have to stop. It was making me yeah. very depressed. Um, so I've taken a break <laughs> from it since then. But It was um, like, what, seven seasons? Something like that. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it's very addictive. I started watching it and it was like suddenly very... Very many Four seasons days. had gone by. So many seasons <laughs> then. <laughs> like, whoa, what happened there? Uh, but I need to take a break now. Uh, and then uh, I finished watching, or I caught up on The Librarians. Um, I love that show. As recommended by you. So I watched the <laughs> movies. I went and bought all the movies on Amazon and watched them. So cheesy. So awesome. They are. They're so cheesy. I loved it. So it's like but Noah, like Noah Wiley is he's just totally cheesy. So and he's adorable though. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was real fun to watch. But I described it as the Eighth Doctor meets Indiana Jones meets Warehouse. Meets 13. Warehouse Thirteen for sure, for sure. Um, especially yeah. with the TV show, I think it's much more Warehouse Thirteen in the TV show. The um, Oh, absolutely. The movies aren't serial, so that kind of, you know, the TV show contributes to that because you're going out and finding artifacts. Like, that's basically the premise of Warehouse 13. But the movies are much more like Indiana Jones, where, like, I have a huge quest and I'm going to go and save it, save right. the world from something <laughs> mystical. But Noah Wiley reminds me a lot of the Eighth, eighth Doctor. Like, the dialogue, so cheesy. The acting, so over the top. Um, so the third so. movie has the actress who plays Kate Beckett on Castle with yes. a French yes. accent. It's ridiculous. Yes. That was the vampire. That was yeah. the vampire one, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So ridiculous. And then um, I can't. I think the first one has um, from Lost. the girl Fiona from Burn Notice. Oh no, that's the second one. Is Fiona from Burn Notice? Oh, okay. The first one has the girl from Lost, the uh, blonde girl who what's his face is in love with. Look it up on IMDb. I don't remember anybody's yeah. names. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anybody's names. I'm sorry, but she's from Lost. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, so um, apparently we are not the only ones who find Noah Wiley irresistible because he has a different love interest in every movie and the TV show. <laughs> I know. And he's such a goober. <sighs> He is, but that's okay. That's cool. So, anyway. Uh, that's funny. Um, and um, then... Uh, I've been watching Friends, because that's also on Netflix, and that's a really good thing to watch while you're doing other things. Um, okay. But it's such a good show. I never watched it when it was airing. I Like, I saw it in syndication a couple of times, but... Yeah, I've got a couple episodes. But now I'm, like, sitting and watching them in order, and it's awesome. It's so funny. <laughs> so thank you, Netflix, for existing. You are amazing. But that one, didn't that one just post? Yeah, like, it just came up on Netflix. Like, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's brand new. So that was exciting. Oh, Penny. Sorry, I went looking. Oh, is that her name? Yeah, Not I don't Penny's name. Boat. Yeah, both. So anyway, yes. um, that's my story. 
I watched a lot of TV. <laughs> well, aside from the Doctor Who Christmas special and the librarians, I'm completely caught up on the Arrow and Flash. And it's so funny because I was, we had this big, huge luncheon at work um, yesterday mm -hmm. for our annual event. And I was talking to one of the chairs and we were talking, we were talking about, can you hear that? Um, the CW, because we were trying to figure out like how to promote our event. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the guys was like, oh yeah, you know, Flash and Arrow are on the CW. And I was like, oh my God, I love those shows. Yeah. So they haven't seen, they didn't even know that Flash had started and they hadn't seen the Arrow third season. Oh, I guess so, they're not watching it live, like, because there's so many crossovers, you kind of know that the, the Flash had started, but yeah. But it was it. it was so funny because they were like, oh, you know who the Flash is? He's Barry Allen, the guy who's in a coma. I'm like, he's not in a coma? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? For a while. But, um, funny. I was, but the, the cast of Arrow was supposed to come to Megacon, and they're slowly canceling. Like first Stephen Amell canceled and I then saw that. I saw your post. the girl canceled and I'm like waiting for everyone else to cancel. But I'm okay with them canceling because that means he's alive. That means he's alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but aside from that, I actually, I just started reading, listening to whatever Outlander because I figure if I've already knit the cowl, yeah. <laughs> I should probably figure out why I knit the cowl. But I posted it on my Facebook, and my friends are like, if you don't like it, then we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, fine. So I, I read or I listened to the first one, and I loved it. And um, was really, really excited to start the second one. And the second one started so slow. <gasps> And I just, I couldn't do it. And I was like, I, ugh, ugh. So. <laughs> well, I'm. Um, the first one is very good as a standalone novel. I'm I about. A series. About a quarter of the way through the first book. Because the long. audiobooks. The audiobook is split into just two. So I'm figuring I'm about halfway through with the first trek. Okay. So. I'm guessing, but... I really liked, I really liked the, uh, the first one. So far, so do it as a series. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe there's, like, seven books. Yeah. I, I don't know really where they're going from there, but the way the, the second well, one started off just kind of made me angry, and it was just really dry for a long time. Like, there was no action forever. I was like, nah, I'm <laughs> And I returned it on Audible. I was like, I'm over it. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of, I'm hoping that when I finish reading it, I'll watch the first movie, or the miniseries, and then when I finish the second one, I just saw that they were coming out with the second book's miniseries, so. Maybe I'll watch it. I, that's what happened for me for Game of Thrones. Like, I had a really, really hard time getting into the, the Game of Thrones books until I watched yep. the show, and then it was easier for me to kind of, like, put a face to a name and like figure out how these people are all related. Like it made a lot more sense to me after I watched the show and I was able to go and read the books. So maybe That's if kind I of my goal. watch it for Outlander, that might help me to read the books, but I just ugh, was not a fan of the second book. I started reading Game of Thrones and I had no idea who anybody was. I was so was confused because you know, it jumps all over the place. Yeah. And because it was an audio book, yeah. I couldn't even, refer it's, to the like the map easy or whatever to zone out when you're listening to audiobooks and realize not realize that you just missed like a chapter <laughs> oh yeah i keep re rewinding like an hour like at a time of outlander but for game of thrones i was so confused and steve was watching the show and i'm like no it's stupid i can't understand it so i started watching it i'm like oh i totally get it now this is amazing so now i'm like somebody on um the 50 shades of geek uh, board just was like, I don't get the books, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, my suggestion 
<laughs> just watch in the this, show first. Cause, in this one case, watching the show. Right, because then, then you know who all the people are. Right. Yeah. But this one is the... Um, I'm also reading a book right now, or listening to a book. I started it today on the plane. Um, it is, it's the book that the nerd girls are reading in their book of the or their book club for January. Um, it's uh-huh. a short book, but it's called Fan Girl. It's by Ram- Rainbow Rowell, um, and it's about <laughs> a, yeah, it's about a college freshman who's a um, a huge fan of this book series is supposed to be like analogous to Harry Potter <clears throat> and she writes fanfic and nobody gets her and she has like social anxiety and she's very introverted and um, doesn't like being around new people and so it's, it's really interesting because I have a lot of those same tendencies so I'm enjoying that a lot um, I don't have social anxiety to the point that she does Obviously, as I right. broadcast myself to the entire world, <laughs> or, you know, just those of you who care to listen. Um, but, I mean, she writes fanfic, and she's out there on the Internet and a lot more comfortable in that space than she is in real life. And, and I've been in those situations where, like, I would rather just stay at home and watch TV and knit than go out and spend time with real people. Um, yep. <laughs> so I've actually, I've really enjoyed it so far. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. But I've I actually I finished I've um finished a couple of books. I am completely obsessed with pretty much anything that Rochelle Mead writes. She does um Vampire Academy oh, and then okay. a spin off. The spin off is those. Bloodlines. I have them, but I've never read them. <laughs> but um <clears throat> her fifth book in Bloodlines is coming out in the like in a month and I finally just read the fourth one because I was waiting and waiting waiting for it to come out on audiobook mm-hmm. like screw it <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded like I downloaded it to my computer and I would just because apparently I had no idea like you can buy Kindle books and yes. download them to your computer yes like it's not just your phone oh, or an actual yeah. device so like I would use it on my computer, I'd sit and I'd knit, and then I'd, like, walk away and I would take my phone with me, so, like, yep. and it, it was con- and it would just really keep cool. syncing it, it was so yeah. cool, but I finally finished that one, and I'm just like, oh, I love this book, you know, I now, love now Kindle books also sync with Audible, so if you're listening to it, it will sync your place in the Kindle book. And then you can read really? it. Really? And then wherever you leave off reading, it'll pick it up there in the audiobook. How oh, cool technology. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> right? Awesome. <laughs> you have to buy both copies, but there's like a discount for buying them both together. Well, because Audible is um, it, it's certain right. books, right? But yeah. like certain books, it's called like Whisper Talk or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Whisper Sync. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's what that is. Uh-huh. Isn't that cool, though? Yeah. Very cool. Such a nerd. <laughs> awesome. I love technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So that was like, whew, that was a lot. It was, We're not even done. <laughs> well, a lot of the stuff that I have for the in real life section, I um, have already alluded to. So I was home over the holidays, working from home which basically amounted to me crafting and watching TV all the time. And now I'm in Long Island. And I think I'm going to, I think we're planning on going into New York City tomorrow night. So I'm really excited for that and get to, I've never been to New York City. I thought you were going tonight. Oh, no. Are you? I'm way too tired. I got up at like 4.30 this morning. No. No. (laughs) Uh, But tomorrow night, I think we're planning on going. I don't know. I got I got here at like my flight left at like eight thirty ish. Got to New York at like nine forty. It was a very short flight. <laughs> Took me two hours. Well, you're very between, close. Yeah. Took me two hours between when I got when I landed and like got my bags very quickly to when I got in the car and drove to the site. Two hours. You're Just actually driving. 
just navigating the airport. Well, um, JFK is on Long Island. So, like, I was driving on Long Island. It wasn't very far. It wasn't, traffic was not bad at all. I'm not in the city. If I was in the city, I would not have done that. I would have taken a cab. But I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm in Nassau County, so it's okay. (laughs) Plus, I mean, there's nothing, (laughs) nothing around this hotel. (laughs) There's a sports venue right over here. And anything else you have to drive to get there. And it's not worth taking a cab, so. But we'll take um we'll take the train into the city when we go in tomorrow night. I'm just so excited because I've never been to New York City before. It's so exciting. I've I've been to New York twice. Like I went about two years before the towers fell. No, not even. I went like a month or two before the towers fell. Wow. And then. I went like a year after mm-hmm. and that was pretty much it. Like those are the only two times I've ever been to New York. Yeah. And I keep saying, I want to take him cause he's never been. And I think it's, it would be such a fun trip. So yeah. have fun. I'm excited. I, I know you're like, working. But. I'll be like one of those Instagram people, like just everywhere. I'm a tourist. <laughs> I'm a tourist. <laughs> all the pictures. And if you have like, if you have like a day that you can go and do stuff, like do all the tourist stuff. Like, yeah. do the tour. I think we're going to go tomorrow night, though. Cause I, we're gonna I'm we saying, like, if you have during the day. I don't know if I'm going to have any time for that. Oh, you'll just have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's not like it's that far away from where I live. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> take the train, <laughs> take a bus. Yeah. <clears throat> So there's a lot. Oh my God, so much that I want to do. But I'm probably we're probably just gonna like go eat dinner and walk around. Um, one of the guys that is here in Long Island was telling us about um, a, a bar that we could go and have a really cool view of um, Times Square. So we might do something like that because then we can like look, but we don't have to walk around outside where it's cold. <laughs> And we can have a fancy dinner, which is always a good thing. Nice, very nice. Yeah. Um, so I don't have much big news. I'm full-time actually at the JCC for the next really? three months. That's cool. Um, that's we have our big... Doing, right? Eventually, yes. Yeah. We have our big gala event, and our all of our journal ads are due we do like this big huge journal and it goes out in the miami herald and um it's like our number one fundraiser and i'm in charge of it (laughs) and working three days a week is not really conducive to that because i'm like missing all these phone calls and like people are calling and asking questions and it takes me a couple days to get to them and i have to catch up and so we got the approval from the CEO and also from my other job to go full time until after. So That's I'm there. Exciting. Maybe actually it might be like two months, but I'm there like through the middle of March. Very cool. So yeah. That's and then cool. still working at my other job like nights and on Sunday. Cause she's Jewish and I can't go and work for her on Saturday. <laughs> But um, that's really it, like, busy, busy, busy. Well, I imagine that keeps you pretty occupied. That's yeah. A lot. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, we actually decided not to move, so that's another thing off our plate. Oh, really? Yeah, we're going to stay here. The commute is a pain in the butt, but our rent is so cheap, and... I mean, we've been here for three years. Yeah. So. It's hard when you get nested in a place, too, to, like, even consider packing everything up and moving. Moving is so But also, like, awful. all the, the deposits and everything is, like, ridiculous. Cause, yeah. I mean, it would be, like, a minimum of, like, five. Expensive. Even when it'd be a minimum of, like, five grand just to move into a place. Wow. Not counting the moving truck and all that other stuff. Yikes. So, yeah, we're good where we are. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Patrick and I kind of talked about that too. It's like we're in a place now where we're doing much better financially. Yeah, you know, because I have an actual job. Um, so, <laughs> but it's like <laughs> it's funny how that helps. Um, but we decided, you know, we're just gonna stay where we are for now. Stay in our tiny apartment. It's not like I'm ever there. You're anymore. not home that often, though. Right. I mean, <laughs> um, and just all the extra money that we have now, just pay down debt save for a house so we don't have to be renters anymore it's just like we're good we're good where we are we don't need to grow right now yeah Yeah. and maybe we'll get to a place where it's like oh look at this we have savings we can have a baby now (laughs) (laughs) that's kind of what i'm hoping for baby kate (laughs) kate jr (laughs) once our baby Hey, yeah. what's a baby? <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is all about. <laughs> We're on a timeline here. <laughs> yeah. We'll discuss that offline. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know I'm having a lot of fun now though, I gotta tell you, this job is like real unreal. Like I can't believe I'm actually paid to do this. It's awesome. Yeah, your job does sound pretty cool. Like, you get to travel everywhere, meet people, do fun stuff. Yeah. (sighs) It's tiring today, but... You're a jet setter. I am. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's all I have. That was a long one tonight. That's pretty much all I have, too. I've got nothing. I gotta go make dinner. (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually gonna go work out. It's January. It's like the thing that people do when, you know, it's the new year. I'm like, I guess I'll (laughs) be healthy or some nonsense. I don't know. Be healthy. (laughs) And what was your reasoning behind Um, behind working out? Because I'm eating out for every single meal always. So I figure it's easier for me to um, burn the calories than to worry about not eating. Go out. Because I want to eat all the good food. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm just going to try to be healthier. I know I make bad food decisions, and I don't know. It's embarrassing, though. I'm, like, super out of shape. And I, I'm i going with one of my coworkers tonight just for, like, accountability's sake. But I hate working out in front of people because I'm – it's embarrassing. So Just go slow. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. I'm gonna. I'm probably just gonna do like a stationary bicycle or something because my knees are bad and I, I'm buxom. So running is never a good idea. Never. I feel your pain yeah. physically. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, stationary bicycle seems like the way to go. But yeah, I. Uh, I usually do like treadmill, and then I decided, oh, I used to do the elliptical all the time. That should be no problem. Oh my god, I thought I was going to die. I set my timer for like 30 minutes, and I was like, after like 45 seconds, I thought I was going to die. My heart rate like skyrocketed. I was like breaking out, like sweat. I'm like, oh, i got to get off this thing. I went back to the treadmill, and I was fine. But See, the tre- I can't do the treadmill. It hurts my knees too much. Well, if you walk slowly. Yeah. But- yeah. I kind of switch between the bike and the treadmill. I think I think the bike would be good for me. But I don't know because I haven't worked out since like college, and um, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I was in great shape in college either, but at least I was trying. <sighs> Man. All right. Well, that's my story. Okay. I'll let y'all know how that working out thing works out for me. <laughs> Uh, might be a colossal failure, but we'll, we'll talk about that next week. That's right, we will. And hopefully, now that the new year is, you know, upon us and Kate's traveling again and we don't have all these crazy holidays, maybe we'll try and have a little bit more consistency. Definitely, definitely work on that whole thing. Um, but definitely come to our group and enter into that contest, all of our sites and stuff, all that good stuff. Um, because we want to have a good pool to draw from for that yarn. 
And we hope to see you all again soon. Yay! Bye!